guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna be doing some planting and we just received the tree load from Jaker that we picked out the other day on our shopping trip this morning. So I wanna walk you through everything we ended up picking out and just show you how beautiful they are. I'm so excited. We're gonna be planting two of them today as well. These beautiful trees are Pacific Sunset Maples and they are the same variety that we have at the four corners of the Hartley already planted. Here comes Erin. <laughs> We're going to place these and then get the holes dug. But what we want to do with these two, and this is part of the reason that we went to Jaker. All the uh, extra noise is coming from the equipment over here. They're wetting down all of the gravel base they just put in. A lot going on right now. Heck yeah. These are They're huge. outstanding. Oh my goodness. So when we went to Jaker, there were two things we were looking for specifically, and we ended up with some other things. but. We were looking for two of these because we are gonna flank the front pathway that leads to the Hartley with these because that's the south side of the structure and we need to get some shade going. Otherwise, it's just kind of unbearable in the summertime in there unless we run the air conditioner, which to run that in there, it just needs to run all the time to keep the temperature down. So these get about 35 by 25 or so. So they're not gonna be overwhelming to the space, but they'll be tall enough to cast some good shade. And I think it'll look good to have the same tree so that we're mirroring sort of the same look here. Oh, oh, that scared me, Erin. <laughs> that is one large stake right there. They didn't actually have these when we went shopping the other day. They had smaller ones and they said that they were getting a new load in the week after we were there and that they'd pick us out two nice ones and they did. They're beautiful. They look almost as big as the ones we have in the ground. Well, maybe a little smaller. But they're hardy to zone four. They're a hybrid tree between a shant is it shantung? Shantung? and Norway maple. And we notice when we walk the tree yard that they are a type of maple, one of the only types that have like the deepest green and glossiest leaf of all the other varieties. And they still look fresh right in the middle of a really hot part of the summer. And so that's what we kind of wanted to have around the greenhouse, something that had brought that lush factor. So anyway, we're gonna be placing and planting those and these, Aaron, we cannot get the tractor in for. No, we cannot. <laughs> so which be, sucks. It's gonna be a hand dig sort of situation. Yeah. They're not, like they could be worse. Yeah, they could be. For sure. And then right here, the Autumn Joy Sedum. I love this perennial so much. These grow about like two by two, maybe a little taller than that. You can see this one right here is starting to get some color, but they're just such a wonderful low maintenance plant and I want more of these in the garden. Sedum everywhere. In fact, we have some of this same type of sedum in a couple of urns on the west side of our house. And I kind of thought like, I've got seven of these. How many containers could I put these in? I love how they, how they grow in those containers and we barely ever have to water them. We cut them back once a year and they just look good and, and like tidy and clean and beautiful all the time. But I think that these will end up out in the South Garden today. Do you want me to get the tree dolly, Erin? Yeah. Okay. That might make it a little easier, at least to get them into place. All right, we are checking the angle out from several different locations. We do sit here. We do sit here. but It looks is, a little weird from this angle, but... It's because we're off to the side. Right. So let me show you guys. When you stand directly center about here, if you're standing directly in the center line with the front and back door of the Hartley, these are pretty perfectly placed. I think this one needs to move in just a tiny bit. And overall, like for the overall design. Could you create a little like seating area right here? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that maybe is what you should do. And, and you can have some, some. Things. Stones <laughs> <laughs> that lead you to it or, or whatever. Are you talking like Oh, a bistro don't, set? don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. Not a bistro set. Something comfortable like these chairs. But do we need a seating area right here when we've got Maybe one right not. here? I don't know. I'm just thinking of something different awesome. options. Yeah, I just I feel like that's really pretty right there. And it always is a little bit weird because see if you look at it from this angle, it's gonna look off too. In fact, I'm gonna pop over into the Persephone Garden and your view coming up on it. I think they look good. And they're gonna create the much needed shade. 
you could do a tree, tree, tree. I was thinking tree, a tree, tree, tree here. Like a smaller tree? Yeah. Like a Chautauqua? Well, yeah. So you see that gap in between the red point and the willow? Uh -huh. So something in this bed that creates some vertical interest there. We can do a big old swoop of hydrangeas over here. Yeah. It'd be pretty. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's a good move. We need shade to the greenhouse. Yeah more than anything else. So now we hand dig these holes. Old school, Aaron. <laughs> Shovels. I am gonna go locate one of our gorilla carts so that we have a way or a place to put all the excess soil while we're digging and we have a way to truck it out of here. Oh man, I just realized this is as far as I can go with the gator. Aaron's got new grass seed going in here. So I'm gonna have to try to walk to the barn and stay out of Chad's way. Look at this, the formation of the new lane. There it is. There's a check for black widows. I don't see anything like that. Okay, I think we're good. Oof, come on. You guys look ready to roll. Heck yeah. <laughs> we're just standing in the shade. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Soaking it up. That is nice. Or you're creating a bit of shade. First hole is almost dug, but the trailer was completely full. So now we're locating a hitch pin so we can hook it up to the gator and take it out to the dirt lands. It seems like that's so much soil to come out of a hole that size. I know. It like expands, I don't know. Well, I think it kind of does, technically. Like it, instead of being compacted in one spot. Right. Yeah, it's all fluffy now. Look at that though, no rocks. So nice. Close enough. Boy, it looks like nothing out here. This looks bumpy. Ugh. Oh my. Hey, look, can I do something? Can I write your name? I can write it. You want to write your name? I can write that. That's an A. That's a good job. That is the second letter of your name. You do your M now. There's your M. Now another A. <coughs> now an N. One. And then a one. That's not in your name, <laughs> you silly girl. That's a one. So we're going to dig both holes, right? Yeah. First and then... You think that's deep enough? Uh, yeah, I think it's plenty deep enough. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And I think you've got several inches to work with to scoot it if we need to. Goodness, you guys, these are just so perfect for this space. Oh, I don't think that they're gonna get so huge because they have, you know, a 20 to 25 foot spread. So even at max spread, they're not gonna touch the Hartley, which was important to me. I didn't wanna have like huge trees that would, you know, create a massive canopy to where if they lost a branch, it would fall on the class. That would not be good. So we tried to choose trees that could cast shade, but sight them far enough away to where they would hopefully never be a problem that way. And I think that these will be perfect. So I just want to walk around here so you can get a look from some different angles. Here's a look from pretty much straight on right here. This one has a little bit of a curved trunk. So we had a kind of a hard time placing that one, but we tried to make sure there was the same amount of brick space from the trunk over on both sides. And you can still see pretty much the whole entire Hartley. And we are gonna limit up to where in the end it creates a canopy, sort of like a picture window, like that. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. And then of course, as you move this way, the position of everything sort of changes a little bit. 
And from the Persephone garden, jump over the sod. The sod is looking phenomenal. It almost looks so good, it looks fake. It's amazing. But yeah, you can see the view of those trees from this angle here. I am just very pleased, very pleased. And the most fun part is that we just got that area behind the Hartley planted. Now we have the trees planted up here. I feel like we are just cooking. I'm gonna run back to the back and see if we can't see these from that angle. So here's the space we just finished. Oh, it's just coming right together. So walk this way. I can see it through the glass. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera angle here. Let me walk in here. We look out the windows and as we come out, oh, they look so nice, Aaron. It looks awesome. It does. This one might be planted slightly lower, but the whole landscape kind of goes down. I think in the end, we'll have them sort of even in how we limb them up. We could probably limb that one a little bit to make it more even at this point. Okay, so now I would like to go out and show you all the rest of the trees and then we'll head out and plant the sedum. Here they are. Oh my gosh, do we have our work cut out for us. <laughs> but they are so pretty. Look at how enormous these cedars are. They are just so beautiful, impressive, and I think these will go in around the new Dreamstream area. And the noise, I don't know if it's picking up loud on my microphone, but Chad's working on the lane over here in the Dirtlands. We saw those cedars and I thought, oh, those would be so perfect in kind of a mountain stream sort of setting. Plus, the other cedar that we planted in the past, you know, we planted three. One of them, the one that survived, is back behind our current pond in that area and it looks beautiful. So I think that might just be a really good spot for them. So we're gonna try these in sort of that area. But let's start here on this side in the shade. It feels good over here. These are Norway spruce trees and they are just so cute. <laughs> They're so pretty. We've got lots of Norway spruces around our garden. They do really well for us in our heat. They do well through our winters. I really like the shape of them and they can grow anywhere from 40 to 80 feet tall, 25 to 40 feet wide, depending on the conditions. Most evergreens, except for like Austrian pines and blue spruce trees, Colorado blues, normally stay on the smaller end of the size spectrum in our area because our climate can be a little bit harsh for them. But so far, these have been wonderful. And in fact, some of the Malad trees, the great big trees that we've had installed, are Norway spruce trees and they haven't skipped a beat. Like they didn't, I didn't have any needle casts. We didn't have any adverse reaction um, or we didn't see any adverse reactions from those trees to their transplant. But they're nice to work around. They're not, I mean, they're like, if you put your hand in like this, you can feel a little prickle, but not like a blue spruce, nothing close to that. They're pretty soft. And one of these I'm actually using in what I meant to be a trio out here. For some reason, I only picked up two instead of three this spring. I'm not really sure how I did that, but I knew that at some point we could find one that would sort of match the same size and we could finish that little trio. And then we've got another one to pop somewhere, either out here in the border in the dirt lands, or we were gonna be working on the new border back behind our barn, you know, kind of where our neighbor's house's backyards are. Moving down the line, we've got five heritage birch. Actually, there's four on this side and one just popped over here. But look at the bark. These are so beautiful. And their leaves turn a gorgeous yellow in the fall. We've got several heritage birch uh, in clump form in our garden already. Uh, Aaron really wanted to get some single trunk trees to dot around, but putting them semi close together, not necessarily a clump, but in close proximity, like you would maybe find them out in nature. I just think they're a beautiful tree. Maybe we can see the bark a little bit better in the sun here. Look at that. It's like creamy and I love the peely nature of it. But they can get, I don't know, between 50 and 80 feet tall, usually for us around 35 to 45 feet wide, but you can still plant them really close together and they take really well to that. They're a really great type for clumping because that's what they do out in nature. Now these will be on drip irrigation like all the rest of our stuff. So they'll probably stay on the smaller end of the size spectrum because they're not gonna be you know, growing in a ditch bank or anything where they can get all the water they want. Okay, the next tree right here. This is a Kentucky coffee tree. The variety is espresso. So it, it's a seedless male cultivar. There are both male and female trees. So the male will be a nice clean variety. It can grow like 50 to 60 feet tall, 30 to 40 feet wide. And the description says that they can take on sort of an elm-like appearance 
uh, in their, their canopy sort of structure, which elms can be really beautiful in their structure. So I'm really excited about this one. And then right here with the super long trunk, we've got an auburn purple ash tree. Ash trees are so gorgeous. We have two of them in our garden. We've got one of the purple ash and one is a different variety I'm unsure of. But the one we've got, it's actually the ash tree that's right through there. It's right above uh, where we've planted some shade stuff and whatnot. But it's a fairly large tree and the color is out of this world in the fall. So pretty. This one can grow upwards of like 40 to 50 feet tall and can spread out 35 to 50 feet. I think this would be a beautiful one to put in the lawn behind the barn. I don't know if we'll put it there or not. I wanna put it somewhere that it's kind of prominent because I know what ours looks like in the wintertime in the front yard. I know what the structure looks like and the silhouette is beautiful. Now for these cedars, the variety is Angel's Blue Weeping Cedar. They top out at about 25 feet tall. They can get 10 to 15 feet wide. So they're a nice narrow type that you can tuck in. The other cedar that we have is the type that can get really, really big in the end. So this will be a really nice size to pop in knowing it's not, I mean, it can get tall, but it's not gonna take over width wise. We'll be able to tuck it in a little bit easier and they are just so incredibly gorgeous and impressive to start with here. Now for our linden trees, there are a total of 12. They're all the variety called Redmond and they grow about 65 to 75 feet tall, 30 to 45 feet wide. They bloom a beautiful yellow in the like late spring, early summer that smells so good. And then they get these kind of little things. I mean, they're not like helicopters, but they're kind of a little bit lighter color than the leaves. So they get a, give it a multidimensional look. And these are a little dusty, but usually they're like a really deep, beautiful green. And all of these are going into our cut flower garden area when we retool. We're hoping actually to get that done in fairly quick order, which might mean where we're going to be planting these, we're gonna have to sacrifice a few plants, like pull a few zinnias out or something like that. I don't know, we might have to pull one tomato plant uh, to get these in, but I want to keep these trees happy and get them in early enough to where they have a chance to root in a bit before winter. But Aaron and Paul, right after they unloaded these this morning, look at this, they set up a drip system. So there's a half inch supply line and then they ran drip around the root ball of each one of these trees and then hilled them in with wood chips. So we'll be able to turn on the hose right here and just run them and nobody will have to stand here and hand water them, which would take a while to keep them nice and moist. So that is great. I think they'll hold over better. And plus they're getting shade from this giant mulberry tree. Some of them are which will take the edge off in the afternoon. And the last one in our lineup, this very skinny Norway spruce is called Supressina. I don't know if that's how you say it. Let me show you the tag. It starts with a C, but it can grow 25 to 30 feet tall and six to eight feet wide. So another really skinny one that we can tuck in somewhere in a flower bed and it creates that strong vertical accent with a really clean appearance. There's the kids running around. I don't know what they're doing right now. <laughs> so that is the product of our last shopping trip that we took you guys on to Jaker. We're gonna be able to complete some really amazing projects with these trees. I'm so thankful to have them sitting here. It's gonna be a fun late summer, fall. So now we can take those seed them out and get them all cozed into a new home out in the South Garden. There are so many spots that I would love to have this variety of sedum in, but this is the one we landed on and it looks gorgeous. So we have cat's pajamas, Nepeta right here. There's the bit of honey, Helianthus, Heliopsis right here. And then there's Budlia, the Miss Violet. We've got the Pope John Paul the second, I think is what these are called roses. These are the ones we dug out from behind the fireplace and moved them out here. There are one, two, three in this location. And the scent is so 
wonderful. I had to stop and smell one because I just, I could smell it in the air and I thought, is that this? <laughs> sure enough, so good. And it's so nice to see them thriving right here. We've also got a Proudberry Coral Berry. This is the uh, Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. Check out the honeybee activity. It's insane. They love it. So I think this is a really good addition right here. I would love to have some sort of like pink Veronica. I've got some right over there. I kept looking at that thinking, oh, that would be beautiful. Tucked in through here. In fact, we have some Autumn Joy right over here in the sort of the same location. All of this we dug up from the back garden, kind of by where the pond is and moved it to this location. Isn't that beautiful? So that gives you an idea as to what we can expect the seed and we just planted to look like eventually. There's another Beyond Midnight Caryopteris right here. This is a really pretty mix of plants. I think I've talked about that several times lately. So I think something like this, like a pink, something that stays a little lower, that has pink blooms, would be really pretty in front of the sedum over where we just planted it. I think I'm leaning toward pink because I don't really have anything in this space except for, I mean, this is pink in the fall, but I think like something pink in the summertime because all the rest of this stuff blooms through the summer. And then we've got the Proudberry Coralberry, which will have pink berries on it here really soon. This one's kind of behind, no, there's some pink berries starting to show up. But very soon this whole thing will be just loaded up. Look at all of these berries. It's gonna be a show. Anyway, that is it for today's project. Super happy with everything that's going on uh, in the last little bit. It just feels like with the cooling down, the temperature, there's new life and new energy, or I feel it at least. I feel that motivation to get out again and you know, start filling in some of the holes I've been looking at. I can see just hummingbirds. Just, they're just all over the place out here. Did you see the one like kind of fly right in front of the camera when I was planting these? I actually stopped for a second, like what was that? <laughs> so much fun. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.